Hello Year 7, it is time for a penultimate lesson. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but they're building to something. We will have a lesson on Friday, and that lesson, I hope, will be good. Uh, it usually works reasonably well as a last lesson. There's a reason I'm going that direction. There's a reason I'm getting you to do all the research you're doing, and thank you for doing that research. So, today, we've done the hunting of the buffalo. We now know how the Native Americans manage that. What we now need to do is work out what they use that buffalo for. So, you'll have to excuse me whilst I do bad YouTube things and peer at things, because I'm really bad at this game. You'd think after 16 weeks I'd be better, but I'm not. So here I have a blank white screen, because that's how things go. Now, if this were a lesson, I would fire these up, and I would say, okay, can you tell me what they are whilst I take the register? But of course, there is no register. So here are the four images. What are they? Pause the video and have a think. Pause now. Okay, let's see what your answers are. Hopefully that's enough time, Liam, in case you missed the pause to hit pause. So here we go. Top left is, top left is, a rattle. I know, you would never have thought, would you? But that's hollow. It's got beans in it. And when you shake it, it makes a rattling noise. What about the top right? This is easier. They're arrowheads. Well done. If you said spearheads, I totally see where you're coming from, but they're actually for arrows. Bottom left, they're moccasins. They're shoes or slippers. Basically, they're designed like foot coverings and they're to walk on, to live in, and basically to keep your feet protected so you're not going bare feet everywhere. So, that's interesting. Native Americans on the plains did not go bare feet unless they had to. Uh, bottom right, it's a fly swat. Okay, big question. What do all of these items have in common? Now, to be fair, you could probably work this one out, even if you didn't know where I was going. And I think you know where I'm going. So I'm not going to ask you to pause the video. I think you know. You are correct. They are all made from parts of the buffalo. This. Here's another picture of a buffalo. I like this picture of a buffalo because it, it looks more like a buffalo. So how did the Plains Indians use the buffalo? Now you remember I said that I'd talk about Plains Indians rather than Plains Native Americans and I apologize. There is a reason why I do that. It's, yeah, basically you know and you know that it's not correct. Also, last lesson, I left you part of a worksheet, the second side of the buffalo hunting. Now one of you filled this in and, and thank you so much, but you probably found that one quite difficult because I haven't given you the answers yet, and there's no way on earth you could actually do it. That, that's this lesson. So it's the second page of that Buffalo worksheet that you had from last lesson that you need to be looking at, the one after the cut and stick bits. So here goes nothing with that section. Uh, now it says in pairs, I would suggest you find someone in your household who deserves punishment, I mean, who wants to help you succeed and work with them. I'd like you to match up parts of the buffalo to their uses. Now, you've already had a buffalo uh, diagram with lots of things to attach to. Now, I will put in the show my homework the cards I'd like you to use. Then, after we've checked the answers on this video, you're going to use this information to complete the table to show how the buffalo was used in all aspects of American life. And then you can have a guy answering the question at the bottom of that worksheet. That's the idea. Uh, so you will pause now. Actually, I'll remove my face. Now. Hopefully then, you've had enough time to go through the whole, hang on, to go through the whole task. So that when I go through the answers now, you've got something to work on. Now, you haven't stuck them down, I, I hope. You've just cut and, and, and moved them around. The instructions on the show, my homework, should have told you how to do this uh, using the resources that I left for you. So you've got uh, parts and names. I'm going to include an image to prove a point, but no other reason. So what we'll do is we'll go through the answers now, and I'm afraid it's not as interactive as I would have liked because I can't hear what you're saying. And therefore, I can't bounce off your answers and explain why or uh, why why you're correct and why you're not correct. I could only have a slightly skew with video. Ooh, it's really bad, isn't it? I do apologise about that. Maybe if I did, no, I don't know. Um, so let's get to those answers and go through them. And see how you did. So we've got the first thing here. I've got cups, spoons, toys, or headdress decoration. 
any idea what part of the buffalo was used for these things? It's the horns. I know, cups, because they're hollow, you see. And you, well, like drinking horns, I suppose. If you knew about those, this was easy. If you didn't, this was really quite complex. Uh, spoons, by the way, you cut out a part of it as you sort of go down and you end up with this sort of, well, that bit at the end, you can't see what I'm pointing at. Uh, that bit, no, wait, that bit, that pointy bit there at the end would be the spoon. It would hold the water or like a ladle, I suppose. Next one, bowstrings and thread. This thread could be used to sew teepees, so it must be hard wearing and quite tough. And clothes, amongst other things. It's sinew. Now, that's the bit. If you do that with your hand, no, wait, yeah, that with your hand, you can just about make it out. I'm, I'm weird. This bit here, that's a sinew. Uh, you can also do it on your ankle. Um, you can also do it if you, uh, well, basically, it's the, it's the, the, the sticky outy bits on your hand when you do that. It's the sinew, you can feel it. And if you keep it supple, you can use it for things. If you let it tighten a little bit, you can use it as bowstrings, and it's immensely powerful uh, as a material. So there's a handy thing. Next one is glue, tools, and rattles. We saw a picture of a rattle at the beginning. So can you work out what this one is? It's the hooves. I know, it's surprising. If you boil down the hooves, the liquid that comes out is sticky. That's your glue. And if you leave them empty, you can turn them into a rattle. Here's another rattle to prove the point. You can also use it as tools. It's a way of sort of, if you use the nail, you can sort of sharpen it down. It's good for a knife. It's good for um, sort of something to get stuff out of things like uh, those things on those pen knives. I'm really not explaining that well. Tools, we'll call it tools. Next one, fly swats or decorations. This should be easy. The tail, of course it's the tail. And here it is again, you get, an, well, obviously it's a fly swat, right? Next one, this is used to tan the hide. So you take the hide, that's the skin, and you tan it so that it ends up supple and soft rather than stretched and breakable. Once it had been scraped, you got the fur off it. Then it was rubbed with this material to soften it. And then it was stretched on a frame to create a soft leather that is comfortable. So better than leather shoes. And some leather shoes are really quite nice. You wouldn't have to break this leather in. It comes ready, soft and supple, but just as tough. And it will last an incredibly long time. Also, it's waterproof. Any idea what you're going to rub in on here? What part of the buffalo? Now, I'm afraid there are some things you can't choose. And no, it's not poo. This one is the brain. Lovely. And here it is on a hide. This actually is a, a coyote hide it's not a buffalo hide but it's been stretched out and it's had the brain of the coyote rubbed on it so it stays soft and supple yeah i know i know but they use everything that's the point you can also eat it it's sweet meat once the flesh and hair had been scraped off this could be used to make ropes shields belts and horse harnesses if after the scraping it was tanned to make leather it could be used to make teepee covers clothes moccasins dolls drums and saddles this should be obvious i already gave you the answer yeah you are. It's the hide. Um, and here we have an image from Francis uh, Packham. No, that's not his name. It's gone from my head. The guy that was uh, really quite honest about showing Indians way of life. And here you have them staking out the hides um, and tanning them and using them. So, and in the background, the teepee is made of actual animal hide. The ones you've seen so far in photographs have been made out of canvas. This one is used for knives, dice, arrowheads, and needles. It is, of course, the bones. Of course, it's the bones. And here we have two needles uh, used for sewing. Next one. Oh, it's the flesh. I, I, my animation is broken, and I apologize. There's the answer. That's kind of obvious. Some was eaten after the hunt. We talked about this last lesson. But most was dried out, jerked, and then mixed with fat and berries to preserve it as pemmican, so the food would last for the next hunt. I've had pemmican. It's disgusting. This is used in religious ceremonies. It is the skull. Excellent. Well done if you got that one. Uh, here is a painted Native American skull. Could be used as a water carrier or as a cooking pot. This is my favorite. This is ingenious. To cook food, it was filled with water, which was then heated by dropping hot rocks into it. So you boil the rocks on, well, you don't boil the rocks. You heat the rocks on a fire until they glow a bit. You shove them in the water and it makes boiling water. Once hot, food could be cooked and boiled in the water. So this has got to be an amazing thing. It, it is a perfect thing. It's the 
stomach of the animal. So what you do is you tan it, you preserve it, and then you can pack it away because it will fold right down. So when you go camping, if you've ever been camping, and you've tried to carry with you all your cooking kit, you'll find that takes up arguably the most space of anything you take with you. Imagine if the cooking pot would roll into a tiny, tiny section and you could put it in your backpack and carry it around. That's what the Native Americans have done with the stomach of the buffalo. It's genius, such a clever idea. Uh, weird, granted, to us and our eyes, but what a fantastic idea. And it means you can use it, well, theoretically forever. And if you don't use it and it gets broken, it's not like pottery or metal. Uh, if it's broken, you just leave it behind, it gets eaten by the animals, nothing is wasted. Now this next thing is dried out and burned to use as fuel. This is how they make fire, because remember they're on the plains. There are no trees. You can't burn wood on the plains. There's no wood. Well, there's very little wood. So wood is too valuable a resource to burn for fuel. What are they burning for fuel? It is, of course, dried dung. It's the poo of the animal. Uh, there they are, using dried dung to power a uh, cooking thing. This works really well because the buffalo eats a lot of grass. We talked about that when I was talking about where the buffalo are and why they're migratory. So a lot of their poo is quite dry and therefore compacted carbon from the grass. So it's perfect. It's a wonderful thing. It doesn't even smell that bad once you've dried it. This is eaten as food or you could dry it out and use it as a hairbrush. I know, what a bizarre thought. What is it? It's the tongue and there is the tongue. You could dry it right out and those ridges on the tongue, they'd uh, separate and you'd end up with something rough and uh, with cracks in it that would work really well as a, as, as, a, as a hairbrush. Now you've seen Native Americans, their hair looks pretty cool. So, and it's reasonably long. So one assumes this works. I guess it's a bit like one of those, um, what do they call tangle teasers, only with less long bristles. Next one, you could use this as soap or cooking fat. It is. Well, fat, literally, it's the fat of the animal. Um, here are some blocks of buffalo fat in artisan soap, because we are so middle class, and that was the only place I could find buffalo fat. Sucks through me, I guess. Stuffing for saddles and pillows, sleeping blankets and clothes. Stuffing, you don't, you don't make the clothes out of this material. Any idea what it is? It's the fur that you scrape off the skin. It therefore acts as an insulating material. Here is an example of a Native American fur blanket. Of course, it's being sold as an artisan thing for middle class people, but it's similar to what the Native Americans would have had. So yeah, they'd have been pretty worn and pretty well looked after um, in their teepees. Now, whether or not it would have the mod cons and comfort that you or I would expect, it's certainly good for them and they like it. Uh, to be honest, it's probably good for us too. Um, I just committed a bit of a racist act in referring to them as them. Um, so yeah, and the way I did it and the reasoning behind it and what I said, problematic. But in these days of um, Black Lives Matter, it pays to check my privilege and occasionally correct myself as I speak. You've now got this chart or a version of it at any rate. And I'd like you to use what we've just done to fill it in. It's, it's relatively simple. You know the answers by now. You've just gone through them. If you don't remember, go back and have another look. It's fine. I can't timestamp it. I haven't worked out how to do that yet. Uh, but you've got the aspect of Native American life. There are four I'd like to cover. The parts the buffalo used and all of the parts that we've gone through just now will fit in this chart. Your task is to work out which parts go under which heading. You might spot some parts of the buffalo that go under more than one heading. And that is absolutely fine. You write them in both. And in the last bit, how the parts of the buffalo were used, you refer to the stuff that's relevant to the heading. So if you've got one thing, let's say skulls, and you believe it's used for two things, uh, religious ceremonies and scaring off people, these, these are not real, I'm making it up, uh, then you put it under religion and you put skull in the religion bit, and then at the end, how the parts of the buffalo are used, it was used to contact the spirits and to form a focal point of their spiritual journey. And then you might say, oh, it's also to scare people away. So warfare hunting, you'd put skulls and then say, it's used to scare people away from their camp during war. And that second one is an utter lie. Please don't write that, but you see how it works. You have the same thing, but a different use at the far end, matching to the aspect of Native American life that it's being used for. Now, there is a way of putting the skull in more than one place, in religion and hunting, but that would require extra knowledge from a previous lesson. It's not something we've just gone through now. So if you want to take it further, you totally can. If you don't, 
you're more than welcome just to use the information that I provided and that you've gone through at home and then fill in the chart accordingly so you can remember it in the future. So don't worry, you can go further is my point. So that is pretty much it in terms of what we do in a lesson. So you'd have about 10 minutes on the first test. This one would take you about 20 minutes. And I believe this video is already about 20 minutes long. So how would we finish the lesson for the last 10 minutes? Well, that, that's reasonably easy. It's a quick quiz. So let's see how you did or, or how you do on the quick quiz. So pause here if you haven't done the chart yet. Okay, I'm assuming you've now done the chart and you've used it to go through all the different things and put in the different aspects of Native American lives and how the buffalo was used to help with those uh, using the material that you've been provided with on Show My Homework. So let's do the quiz now. What would you need from the buffalo to make a fly swat? Well done, it's the tail. All right, next one. What would you need? from the buffalo to make a hairbrush. Oh, where is my hairbrush? Indeed, it is the tongue, one of my favorites. What would you need from the buffalo to make a bow and arrow? It is the sinew. Remember that? That thing on your hands that, yeah, you, I can't. I'd show you my foot in lesson, but to be fair, you probably spared that. Well done. It's perhaps as well, this is remote learning, isn't it? Uh, oh, and the, you could also use the bones to make the um, bow itself because uh, you need the bones to hold it in place. Obviously, you can use uh, wood, but you can also literally use the leg bones of a young buffalo if you wish. You've got to be very careful with that, though. Next one. What do you need from the buffalo to make? Hot water. Ah, now then, this one's a bit complex. Any ideas? Yeah, of course, it is the dung to make the fire and the stomach to boil the water. Ah, you need two things. Well done if you figured out both though. All right, next one. What would you need from the buffalo to make a teepee? Somewhere to live and to keep you sheltered. This one's complex. It is. Well, obviously the hide, but you also need the brain to make the hide work usable. You need sinew to stitch it all together and you need the bones to do the stitching. Ah, four things. All right, next one. What do you need from the buffalo to hunt buffalo? Ooh, ooh, how many things are there here? Well, obviously you need fur for the saddles. You need hide for the saddles. You need the brain to make the hide workable. You need sinew for the bows and arrows and you need bones to stitch everything together and also to provide the ends of the bow. Clever, isn't it? All righty. Here are the answers, by the way, um, to all the different sections, just in case you can't remember. Uh, do I have a second thing? No, I don't. But here are the answers. I'll leave that up. I'll take my face away. So if you want to pause the video at this point, just to check if you haven't been able to check when I was going through it or you've not been able to go back for whatever reason, here are all the answers for you. And that's the end of the lesson. Now, if it were the end of the lesson, we'd finish with the now traditional chair, but um, it's remote learning. I'm not sure how that would even work. So I can't do the chair and I apologize. Hopefully this has been a useful lesson and hopefully you've enjoyed it. It is the penultimate lesson, the last but one. There is one more lesson open to us. I will do a lesson on Friday and if you want to submit anything from this or the next lesson, I warmly encourage you to do so. I've said before, but I'll say it again. I've been really enjoying looking through the work you've been showing me and being able to offer some feedback. Some of you have come on in leaps and bounds. Uh, some of you are absolutely heroic. Yes, Amy, I'm talking about you. And others of you have done exceptionally well uh, over time and, and have really, really got the bit between your teeth. Yes, Shrey, I'm looking at you. So some of you are absolutely amazing. And if I've not named you, I apologize. I'm, I'm only picking one or two. You have done really well. And it's been fantastic to read all of the work that's coming through. Uh, Eve, I've been loving reading your stuff. Um, Joe, it's been fantastic seeing what you're doing. Toby, it's just a joy to see how much you enjoy the lessons. Marco, thank you so much for putting all the effort in and doing the lessons. 
it's much appreciated. Freya, both Freyas, thank you. Um, Chloe, I still haven't seen much from you, but the bits I have seen have been lovely. And um, yeah, there's too much to mention. Uh, Alfie, you're amazing. Thank you for trying so hard. Uh, and, and keep coming back to it. It's much appreciated. I'm doing the wrong thing here. I shouldn't be doing this. I can't name everybody. Um, and perhaps I should. But you've all been fantastic. It's been lovely reading your work. It genuinely has. So if you want to submit anything, please, 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 please feel free to do so. If you don't want to submit it, for whatever reason, then these are the last two lessons. So I'm not going to hold you to it. It's not intrinsic to any kind of grade. I think it's more important than grades. It's all about developing you as people and making you better people and more able to cope with things. That is the joy of history. On Friday, I've got something fun planned. Uh, I will hint by showing you this. Yes, it is a TP. Um, I will give you more examples of that on uh, Friday's lesson. I'll explain to you what I want you to do with it. And that is where we're going with those um, Native Americans. The last homework, by the way, is for you to create your own totem pole just list what you put on it. Now I recognize that not all Native American tribes in the plains would have had a totem pole. We're going to take a liberty here. We're going to suggest that you as a Native American have found out about totem poles and would like to make one for yourself. So use the tribe that you have decided for your character and you are going to create a totem pole. Uh, just list it for now uh, on that. So you should have an adult name. You should have been on a vision quest. Or received a new name. You should have a tribe, a moieti. You may even be married. And now you will have a totem pole. Those six things are going to be very important for our final lesson on Friday. If you have been, thank you very much for watching Year 7. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. And yeah, have a lovely day. Look after those around you. Make good choices. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you Friday.